before we start this video, I wanted to just do a short little compilation of what we did this weekend. Um, we had a really good time, a lot of crazy stuff happened, and here's what we went through this weekend. Welcome back. We are in the OG shop tonight, and tonight's plans is this. <laughs> so, we have a 385 here, as I've shown in a couple videos ago. And it's just been sitting in that corner back there. It was sitting outside for a long time. No, so. it wasn't. You know, it, was it was sitting out underneath the lean to. It's not outside. Yeah, but Matt let When it you sit. say outside, that sounds like you're letting it rain in it. Yeah, it's but not been raining. Matt let it sit out. Uh, dig or die, and it rained that night. What? Anyways, it wasn't a dig or die. We it was at Crossville. At Crossville. Whatever. <coughs> this engine was given to Matt at Crossville, and it was supposed to go in Miles El Camino. Why are we going? Because I'm trying to explain where it came it from. It doesn't matter where it came from. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we need to take this thing apart because we need to check it. To make sure it's going to be a good motor for my truck. Who's the halt? What? We don't have to take it apart. What is your budget? That will determine whether we take it apart or not. Well, I mean, I have a little bit of a budget. Okay, so... I thought you said we need to check the bearings. Yeah, but that doesn't mean we have to take the whole engine apart. We just pull rod caps and main caps, put them right back on, torque right back plan. down. Well, when you say take it apart, that sounds like disassembly. What is disassembly? <laughs> He's made this so much harder than it's had to be so far. This is going well. So this is a GM 350 5.7 block. It has, if you look back here, right, 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 right down to here. That is a one-piece remain seal. So this is a late model. It should be a passenger side dipstick block, and it is. So it's a passenger side dipstick, one piece for main seal. However, it does not have roller lifter pedestals. So that tells me that this block was probably like an 87 block, like an early one piece for main seal. Out of a truck or like out a of a Camaro? Truck. It would be out of a truck probably. I mean, Camaros didn't. They're, they're terrible. But this didn't have a hydraulic roller cam, but it has a rear main or one piece rear main. So it should be like an 87, 88, 89 block, somewhere there. Okay. In the early 90s, they switched to hydraulic roller cams in all of them. And they would have had these pedestals to hold the spiders that held the hydraulic roller lifters in. Anyway, this thing is, let's see. Do you know, is it 40 over? I think it's 40 over. Well, if it is, yeah. like you said. It's 40 over. This is 0.040. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's 40 over. It's got a little bit of a dish piston. So 
that'll help run it on pump gas if you're going to run it on pump gas. Yeah. But the situation we were told was that this thing smoked terribly. But that doesn't mean that there was a ring problem. This was supposedly a Blueprint Engines short block. They bought from Jigs, I assume, someplace, I don't know. But they bought this Blueprint short block and it smoked and they pulled the engine out of it. But I highly, highly doubt that a Blueprint short block would be a problem. I highly doubt that. That's a very good, reputable company. They have very good quality control measures in place from what I understand. So I would just about bet that the short block was probably fine, but the valve guides and valve seals of the cylinder heads they put on were probably bad, which would have caused smoking. smoking. Uh, I see a lot of carbon on the pistons for a new engine. It doesn't have very many miles. It's got a lot of carbon on the pistons. That can either be oil from the valve guides or they ran extremely rich. I don't know what the induction system was that they had on it. But here it is. We don't know. The cylinder walls don't look bad. They're, they're filthy. I mean, they need cleaned up. But depending on your budget, we can either, and I have done this, and I don't recommend it, but I have done it because I didn't have any money. I took an engine similar to this and hung it by the water pump bolts, holes, over a tub and used kerosene and parts cleaning blush brushes to clean it all out. And then I put new gaskets and seals and put it right back in your mom's Suburban and we ran it for another 100,000 miles. And I'm guessing the right way to do this would be to disassemble it and the, take it to Bob. The right way to do it would be to disassemble it, take it to Uncle Bob, have him check the cylinders. However, I will warn you, if you take it to Uncle Bob and he doesn't like any of the cylinder walls, at 40 over, your next step is going to be 60 over. And that's the last time around the, the sun for that block. You yeah. know what I mean? And another thing is, I don't know, there's such a thing as core shift in stock GM blocks, any block that's cast. But if there's a core shift problem and you go 60 over, you could end up with one cylinder wall that's thin. We don't want that. No. So is this thing two bolt main or four it's bolt four main? four bolt main. Rolled over, I haven't looked at it. I've never seen this thing rolled upside down. I rolled it over the other day. Okay, so we have four bolt main caps, that's nice. And we do have a serial number tag from a remanufacturer. I don't know if that's a blueprint tag, but it's definitely been remanned. It does have brass freeze plugs in it. The main caps have been numbered, as you can see, two, three, four. Now this is interesting because this is a cast iron main cap, and of course the rear main cap is cast iron, but these almost look like steel. That does not look like a standard cast iron main cap. Um, is it better to have a one piece rear main seal than a two? Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, it just depends. Like, the one piece for main seals leak less. That's good. Passenger side dipsticks are harder to get oil pans for because most of the small blocks were driver side dipstick. So, but, I mean, this looks like a pretty decent block. One of the things that you can tell if it's got core shift, and I'll show you the camera for some, anybody that's trying to learn something, is this boss for your camshaft where you're front cam journal bearing is. If the block has excessive core shift, you'll see a thin side over here and a thick side over here, like the, the hole will be bored down the center of the block, but the you'll see that the boss is off to one side. And this block, judging by the cam location and the, the cam boss, looks like it's probably a pretty good block. So. I mean, personally, what I would do, first thing we should do is just start pulling some rod main caps and see if we see any signs of trauma, death, destruction. Start there. Yeah. 
So let's start up here on number one, Tommy. Okay. Because on a small block Chevy, the farther away from the oil pump, the oil pump rides on the rear main cap. So the farther away from the oil pump you go on a small block, if you're going to find a problem. If you're going to yeah. find a problem, if you're going to find it on number one main. Don't waste your time going backwards. Yeah, so let's start with number one main cap, and we'll start with your number one and number two cylinder rod caps. We'll start there. So that smell that you're smelling, it's like an old oil smell, like hot, burnt oil. Like my blazer. Yeah. <laughs> that's just your typical used oil smell from an engine that's been run and you know, standard motor oil. Yeah. But look at this bearing, it's beautiful. That is an absolutely beautiful bearing. Uh, you see, zero problems. Like, you couldn't ask for a used bearing to look any better. It looks really good. Should I just go ahead and put it back in? Yeah, just go ahead and set it back on. And what I would do is just, uh, Gently run those nuts or those bolts the back. The arrow down. faces this way, right? Yes, the arrow needs to face yeah. forward. And that just snug goes up with your little impact. Because we'll we're gonna go back through and probably clean this thing all up, but we'll just see what we find. Just a little bit more and get these right dead center in the middle of that cap. A little bit more. Right there. That's good. Alright, so now what we're gonna want to do is get your socket and you're going to want to back this off uh, until the nuts off to about like three threads on it and then just take a hammer and yeah. tap on them. And I've done this, separate. I'm just, I've only done it once. That's okay. You know? Yeah. It is so hard for me to stay focused filming in here with Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus this is what we call building boost. This is why we call her Scrap. That's about seven pounds. She's ready for lunch. The problem is Scrap is feeling trapped. And as long as June's here, there's an issue. Normally she would love June this. June looking at yeah. it. She Normally this would not this. be a problem, but when there's another dog in the general vicinity, she builds boost. Look at, look at June. Where's June at? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is she looking at her? <laughs> They stare at each other as, as Chevy builds booze. <laughs> she antagonizes her. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And now we're going to go fight. And now we have to tell each other how serious we are about being scrapped. Okay, you two. I should be letting you do this. So. I'll, do, I'll do one. So we have another pretty decent looking bearing. It's got a little bit of wear, but nothing serious. Crankshaft looks good. So for my knowledge, what are you looking for? So what you're looking for is a hot spot in the bearing. Like this one's got a little discoloration, but I think that's mostly just from the oil. Um, the other thing is like grooves, right? Yeah, you don't want to see grooves. You don't want to see any metal flaking. Um, if you've taken one apart, you, you smell that smell that you smell. Mm -hmm. Okay, times that by 10. Oh yeah, I remember There's like, been a few times where we've well, done up some bearings. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean this this has got a little bit of wear to it. This would be what number one rod bearing. So like I said, if it, if it's been run low on oil, or if it's had some abuse, you're going to find it in number one and number two rod bearing. That's the first place you're going to have trouble because it's the furthest away from the oil pump in a small block Chevy. Would you replace it? Yes. This particular bearing, you can see some wear in the center. Like that main cap was perfect. You couldn't ask for a better. But this rod bearing has got a little bit of wear to it. This uh, puts me in mind of something that's been run rich and overfueled mm -hmm. and contaminated the engine oil. 
with gasoline. See what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I understand. So, uh, the fact that they said it smokes, judging by what I'm seeing here, I'm going to lean towards this is a sign of overfuel or run rich, or uh, maybe they've turned an electric fuel pump on and let it run and didn't realize that a needle on the seat had stuck and they filled the crankcase full of gas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't think this engine, but based on what we're seeing so far, I don't think it's been abused, but I think someone's had their hands on it that didn't know what they were doing. So, so at this point, judging on what I've seen so far, I am going to tell you, if your budget allows, I would go ahead and disassemble this short block, take it up to Uncle Bob, have him thoroughly clean it in the hot tank, uh, and just check the bores. Um, and I don't know what your, we need to talk about what your goals are for it. Like if you want to run this thing on pump gas, I assume you want to run it on pump gas, you I want to daily it and drive it. Yeah. So you're going to want to keep the compression ratio down below 10 to 1. And I don't know what you're doing for a can. Like if you're going to, if you want it to sound kind of racy, have like, like the Malibu, then you're going to want to keep the compression up because the camshaft's going to bleed off some cylinder pressure. If you leave the compression low and then put a big cam in it, it'll be a dog. It won't go anywhere. It won't do nothing. Mm -hmm. So we need to have some idea of where you're going with this and what your budget is. So we're talking about using those Vortec heads. Is that still the plan? Yeah, we'll use the Vortec heads. All right, so the Vortec heads are a 64cc combustion chamber. That's fairly small for a pump gas engine. And with this having a 3.75 stroke, stock would be 3.48. A 3.75 stroke with a 64cc head, you're gonna to wanna to stay with a dish piston like what these are. So there's a chance if you take this thing apart, you take it up to Uncle Bob, he might be able to just tell you we can reuse these pistons. That would be a good thing. That will save you from having to rebalance the engine. That'll save you from having to buy only pistons. Um, judging by what he sees, you may be able to reuse the rings, but I'm going to guess that Bob's going to tell you new rings, new bearings, clean the pistons up maybe and reuse the pistons. What do you think that costs? I can't say. I mean, I don't know what Bob, uh, I, don't, I can't price Bob's work for him. And the other thing is, is Bob's not going to be able to tell you until he takes it and cleans it and inspects everything. You know what I mean? If he tells you it's going to be $800, then you get it up there and it's got one crack piston or it's got a, a loose wrist pin. Uh, you know, the rods all show they need to be resized. Every little thing starts to add up. But the nice thing about this is it's a very common system, very common short block. So, like you can go to Jegs and just buy all brand new connecting rods. They might not be the highest quality, but the, as long as the machine works good, we're not trying to set the world on fire. We're not trying to make 1,500 horsepower of this. So, so this is option A. Option A. <laughs> Plan B. Plan B. Would be your way, where Wait. we would just clean it up ourselves. And maybe Why has it got to be my way? Because that's the way you just said you did it. I did this a long time ago because I didn't have any money, and I had two young children and a family to feed, mm -hmm. and I didn't have. The good old I had kids excuse. <laughs> <laughs> what I tell you, 15, 20 minutes and it's all good. Okay, so <laughs> what if we just replace the, the rod oh. the rod bearings, clean it up, and throw it back together? How high a risk do you think that really is? So you'll have gaskets, motor oil, labor, antifreeze, coolant. Like, gonna have that anyways. But what I'm saying is, is if you skip a tiny little step right now, you redo it all. and you throw it in the truck and you drive it up the road and it's got a problem, then you got to do it all over. So you're out your oil, your coolant. So if you're on a tight budget, there's certain things you don't want to miss. So the first thing we need to do is call Uncle Bob and say, look, we've got this short block. I think what we should do for right now is just go ahead and disassemble it because it's got to be disassembled 
to do anything with it from this point on. So what I would do is just we'll just go ahead and knock the rods and the pistons out, pull the crankshaft out, and then we'll see everything as it comes apart, and we'll know more once we get it completely apart. Let's do it. So I'm training young young Thomas here to use scrap rubber hose when you're uh, separating stock connecting rods where the rod bolts don't come out. Use uh, I just use some scrap rubber hose to protect the rod journal so that as that connecting rod slides down the rod the threads on the rod bolts don't scratch the rod journal. Now all your rods are numbered. We'll go ahead and number the caps. The same well this I think they already this marked. one's numbered, that one's numbered. Okay, so the caps are already numbered. You're good. The very first small block Chevy that I ever had, I pulled out of a uh, 65 Impala over at mom and, or my grandma and grandpa's. They called it the hog lot, where they had used to have hogs. There was a 65 Impala back there, and Dad had me go back and pull a 283 out of an old four-door Impala. And when we brought it over to Dad's shop, that's how he numbered the rod caps, and that's how he showed me to do it. Because we didn't have any money, we don't have fancy stamps and all that stuff, so we just used a punch and a hammer. It's not a good sign. Got it? So let's see that one. Okay, so that's real bad wear. Show that in That's definitely needing replaced. But, well, now it's loose. Hmm. Hmm. It seems to be okay. It seems to be all right. Put your rod cap back on that one. All right, Allison's gonna take out her first piston. Show me Without my boss. dad's supervision, I'm gonna, I've done four of them now, so I think I so have enough pro. practice. Yeah, okay. So first thing, we just took out number three, we're on number four. So go ahead and grab the impact. These are nine sixteenths. So I'll go ahead and spin this over so it's, well, you could just come on this side, trade me. So you're gonna just loosen them. You don't wanna take the nut all the way off. See, right there and there. Put your uh, other hand on the top of that, there you go. There you go. Yep, right about there. And then, yeah, just could put a couple more threads on that. You're not gonna hurt it. There you go. Thread it on a little bit. Okay, so now you grab the ball peen hammer. Doesn't have to be a ball peen, but use the wood side of it and hit both both nuts. Do you usually tap it like that? I just, yeah. Yep, and then it actually separated on this side, but you can hit it once. All right, so see, it's got that little gap, it's separated. Mm -hmm. Now I'll do like my dad did, so you pull it from here and here, pull it, suck it up onto the, back onto the cap. You're not gonna break it. There you go. I know, I'm just weak. You got it. So. Okay, so go ahead and spin the nuts off. Uh, just right there. And then go ahead and take the cap off. This part? Yeah, just the top, the top half right here. You just pull from both sides, yep, right there. Takes you a little wiggling. There you go, and then you set over there by the nuts. Grab those little rubber hoses and stick them on the ends. So then I was gonna do that and I made the same mistake. Just use your hand until it gets to a certain point and then you have to use the hammer. Just flat just like palm that. it, flat palm it like that. There you go. And now, Come before, to yeah, go over to that side. You can either put your leg there or you just put a hand underneath. And then, and then once it gets to a certain point, you gotta grab the hammer. Oh, you got it. Okay, How'd you bad. already get oil on your face? Did I really? Yes. 
Oh, no. You look like you have a unibrow. <laughs> Disaster. Oh, I don't even remember touching my face. This is why I have acne. Oh, please. Is that supposed to take them off? No, I just, you're over there, like, hugging my piston. Okay. Well, I was gonna wear this yeah, to the gym. Exactly. <laughs> I was gonna wear this. <laughs> you literally disaster. just cover yourself in oil. Wait, 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 wait. Back up here. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Oh. Put the uh, cap back on. Now, this is important. These? Yep. See if you can figure out which way it goes. All right. So that is. Is it supposed to match up with this side? Yes. There's a chamfered side and a flush side, like a flat side. Oh, okay. So, yeah, see, so let me come around this side. Yeah, so they're all kind of flush. Yeah, see how this side is flush, and then look at the other side. Mm -hmm. See how it's got the kind of ridge on it? Yeah. That's how it goes. You took out your first piston. Good job. Do another. You're going to do another? Yeah, we can tag team. All right. That's not bad. That's not bad. I think I'll, I'm going to get this. No, it's not too bad. This is the first small block Chevy I've ever taken apart that had a one piece remaining seal because I'm freaking old school. <laughs> That's the newer one, which, newer, if it was an 80s, it's still 45 years old, probably. <laughs> Isn't that crazy to think about? What is that? What do you do? Math. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your Malibu is. Look, 40. when someone tells me 20 years ago, I think 1980. Yeah. That's 20 years ago to me. Yeah. It's not 20 years ago. Well, you think about... When someone says 10 years ago, I think 1990. <laughs> well, you think like the OBS trucks. That's a 15-year-old truck. No. Yeah. No, it's 30. It's <laughs> making them sad. It has to slide off the rear main. And it appears as though, what do you know? Silicone, is that why they're all sticky? Um, it has a gasket, a flat gasket right here that makes it stick. But see, this is a one piece remain seal, so. That's pretty sexy stuff, Junior. I mean, that's a 3.75 stroke one piece remain seal crank. That's uh. Somebody that's, has a room in there. Really? No, they just, they almost ruined. They tried to ruin it, but I'd say that remain seal is fine. You never use that. This is actually going to be a really nice little engine. I just thought of something. We're going to use Vortec heads on this, but this is not a factory roller cam block. Nothing set in stone. Well, what I'm saying is the Vortec heads your valve train and everything would be nice if you could just take it out of that block and stick it in this, but you can't. Because that's a factory hydraulic roller cam. Remember I told you it has those pedestals in the intake valley to hold the spiders? Yes. This doesn't have that. So this will require retro hydraulic roller lifters and a retro hydraulic roller cam, which is... So what is the not? Flat tap it can. Okay, well what if you're just using the heads? Well, I mean the heads don't matter. You gotta you gotta put either a flat tap of cam in this or a, a retro hydraulic roller lifter cam. One way or the other. No matter what heads. Do you have anything against flat tap it? No ish. Ish. Today's motor oils do not contain the same additives that they used to 30 or 40 years. I guess you, it's 40 years ago now, like 20. But 40 years ago, when everybody had flat tappet camshafts, there were additives in the oil that helped lubricate those flat tappet lifters. And they have removed all those additives out of the oil for green weenie emission regulations. <laughs> so now we're all stuck. 
Weenie Hut Jr. rules. So if you're going to put a flat tap in it, you're going to want to run probably the pen grade motor oil, the green stuff, because it'll do better with, I mean, it'll hold up fine. But you don't want to just go to AutoZone and buy cheap 5W30 and stick in it because the camshaft won't last. Okay. So. As long as I can do that, I'm okay with that. So here's the other thing ish about the flat tap of cams. Mm -hmm. They're very strict on break in. As soon as you fire it up, you've got to bring the engine up to like 2500 RPM or 2000 and then vary your RPM range to keep the camshaft properly lubricated while it breaks in. And if it doesn't go well during break in, the cam wipes and it takes out everything underneath of the cam. Good news, you're going to be there when I go to fire this thing. Oh, so no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, you've done it before. Well, I have done it before, yes. Not in 40 years now, but yes, I have. Like everything I have built, <laughs> like everything I have built since 2000, 1997, 1999 in there, every engine I have built after that has had a roller cam, either a retrofit hydraulic roller, such as this, or solid roller. But the nice thing about a flat tap of cam is they're cheap. Well, I mean, they used to be cheap. I haven't looked at the Biden inflation prices, but they used to be $79 at some of them. The jigs, whatever, you can buy a $79 cam and lifter kit. I'm sure they're probably twice that now. But they're still half the cost or a third the cost of a retrofit hydraulic roller lifter cam. Did he sound good and run good if you do it all right? Yes. Okay, that's all I care. Let me know how confidence we're gonna do it right yeah we're gonna do it right boy yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's fine everything's fine <laughs> okay i'm taking the crank out she's a little heavy old son yeah all right i'll just set her up there Now, what you're going to want to do is pull up your sleeves up past your elbows. There you go, old boy. Hit the switch. Just go ahead and start soaking it. This is a nice piece, huh? Yeah. Kind of got to get her a little angle there, don't you? The main bearings all look really good in this. Let her dry right there, and we'll be ready to take it to the machine shop. I don't even have Bob's number. Well, it just so happens I got her old. Yeah. God, he's gonna hate me. He's, mm -hmm. he's gonna hate me less you love as much as he hates Billy. I'll just call him out of nowhere, like, "Hey, Bob, I got a big old project for you." You know, because we've already given him five projects at once. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be fine. This is an easy one. All right, guys. So we have successfully torn down our 385 short block. Allison took out her first couple pistons tonight. So uh, next step is to get Bob on the phone and figure out uh, some some things. Uh, it sounds like I got a lot of decisions to make. Obviously, all of the decisions are going to be budget based. That's pretty much what's going to be the deciding factor. Probably going to have to do a flat tap it, like my dad said. Probably going to have to do a lot of things to do the, the Vortec heads and have the combination work right for doing like a 93 octane street build. But, you know, <laughs> I'm glad I have my dad to tell me this stuff or else I would have had no idea. I would just throw it on there and be like, oh, well, let me do this, let me do that. And then I would have bought all the parts and wasted my time and money. So, I'm glad he was here to help me tonight to teach me some of those things saves me a lot of heartache because I don't understand I don't understand why it has to be low compression I, I wouldn't even understand that like I got a lot to learn man yeah. we both do but yeah. I'm glad we got it torn down I'm gonna call it Bob get it all figured out tomorrow we get to go pick up the parts truck gonna go to a1 a1 auto parts in Buckeye Lake and see our friend Mark and go get some frame saver paint I'm gonna be out there tomorrow with the wire wheel for probably three hours <laughs> 
wire wheel in my frame. My, my dad's gonna let me try this out. I don't know. This looks like some kind of cheapo $20 Amazon special, but apparently it's a spray gun for paint. And it's electric. And he wants me to spray my frame with it. Stain sprayer. Yeah, I don't. Know. I think he bought that and be like, "Oh, this is a piece of junk." Can and I then help probably with that? wants that me to. Like, it does. Yeah, I want to try like, it because oh that God. is a budget way of being able. Because you don't have to have some thirty-gallon air compressor that's like hundreds of dollars. You just have to have a freaking source of electricity. Which we have. Which that is the have. one thing we do have in our house. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. We're gonna try and bust out some more videos this week, like we did last week. We finally rested up from this last weekend. And we're gonna get to hustling. Yep, taking the or putting the converter in the dart tomorrow. Oh yeah, we're doing that too. At, at least if we get the transmission out. <laughs> Let me rephrase. Might take. Might be a part three. Let me rephrase. We want to get the converter in the dart yeah. tomorrow. No, we will. We we, we will. will. We will. Something that I've taken away from today is I think I'm most excited to start learning more about engines. That I don't. Body work, it's all right. It's cool seeing like <laughs> you've been doing body work forever. I know. I've just You're doing grunt this work. infinite loop of body work, and it's fine. I like seeing the before versus the after. They like to call it body work, but it's really just grunt work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They call um, it body work to make you feel like you're doing something special. But, but, shut up. Anyways, I'm in the same boat. They make oh, we'll go ahead and start sanding it. That's true. And then you feel, That's they true. give you We're a tool. Mistaken. They give you this nice tool. You're like, oh, wow, this is cool. Oh, I'm but doing just, something. Yep. <laughs> okay. We're at least we're in it together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It just takes me back to when you were scraping all the rubber. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's in the distance doing all the important stuff. And <laughs> I'm, I, like, it was a three hour long process of him doing important stuff. And you just come back to me every five minutes. I'm still scraping. <laughs> How's it going? Still scraping. Still scraping. And I've seen like a million comments later. Legend has it. Tommy's still scraping. <laughs> still scraping. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are excited for what we have planned this week. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch more funny stuff. Good stuff. So thank you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. So I want to give a huge shout out to all the photographers this weekend. Um, while I was filming in between rounds, I got to talk to a lot of people. Um, Josh Duncan. Dylan Large, uh, Dylan Amsden, uh, there's a lot of photographers, but I'm gonna roll some of their photos they got of our cars this weekend. Those guys don't get enough recognition, man. Um, they're always helping us get a, the best thumbnail for our videos, and me and you have both been in that spot before where we're, we're taking pictures after an event, and we upload the album, and it's just, we put so much time and effort into it, and traveling, and all this stuff. And it don't even get the recognition that it really deserves. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to pay anything for your pictures. Nobody has the attention span to look at the pictures. Nobody wants to share them on Facebook. Everybody wants to crop your watermarks. Everybody wants to crop your watermarks. That happens all the time. So, I want to go ahead and tag as many as many photographers I can think of off the, off the top of my head. Uh, DRD Visuals. Um, that's Dylan Large and Josh Duncan. They absolutely killed it this weekend with the pictures. Dylan Amsden, uh, I got to talk to him for the first time this weekend. He's uh, He works with 660 Street. He had some awesome shots this weekend. Um, there was a, I think a local photographer there. It was Redline Photography. Redline Photography, yeah. They had some awesome pictures. Um, Motion, Motion Raceworks, Raceworks was there. Had some pictures. I don't know who their photographer is, but I'll put those up. There was a really cool one in your brother's truck. Yes, there was. Um, am I forgetting any? I know I am. You absolutely are. There were a lot of media people there, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. We'll go through Facebook and look. So them. I want to try and tag as many of those people. I'm going to put them in the comments. I'm going to put them in the description. I want you guys to... Uh, after you're done watching this, I'll put this at the end. I want you guys to go click those links and go share their albums. They deserve it, man. They put so much time and work staying out there all day, all night, snapping pictures for us. To If we go out first round, at least I can say I got a good, good ass picture of my Falcon doing a wheelie or whatever. And that means the world to me. So please share them. They would really appreciate that. Uh, they all deserve it. So thank you guys. That would make me very happy. Now we can end the video.